Good morning and welcome to Ridgeway. I was expecting a much smaller crowd, but Jim and I were just discussing we have a lot more people than we anticipated. I think one reason is because Jim's family is here and you may recognize one of them. That's Christy, our secretary, and the whole Mitchell family is here, including Jim's wife. So welcome to them. I know you probably remember him. He was our pastor on May 14th. So we're looking forward to another sermon from him. So we have uh, hopefully a few announcements, but I don't see Nancy, so maybe not. <laughs> Any announcements? Okay, then we'll have our prelude. <laughs> Please rise as you're able for our call to worship. You can find out a variety of places. In fact, it's on page 660 in your hymnal, it's in your bulletin, and it's on the screen. Join with me, please. The Lord be with you, and also with you. 
Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let's pray. We thank you. We thank you for who you are, for what you have done. You bless us so richly in so many ways, in ways that we see and in ways that we don't. We are gathered here in your name. And you tell us where two or three are gathered in your name, there you are also. We welcome you among us. Meet us in our need. Meet us in our darkness. Meet us in our light. <coughs> Cleanse us and make us whole. And we will praise you and lift you up. And we pray and we ask your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Just as I am, without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, the Lamb of God, O Lamb of God, I come, just as I am, and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blot, to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot. O Lamb of God, O Lamb of God, I come just as I am, poor, wretched, blind, sight, riches, healing of the mind, yea, all I need. In thee to find, O Lamb of God, I come. Just as I am, thou wilt receive, wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, relieve, because 
my promise I believe, O Lamb of God, I come. Just as I am, without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. And that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, O Lamb of God, I come, O Lamb of God, O Lamb of God, I come. That made it worth getting up this morning. Thank you. I want to read Psalm 138. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple, and I will praise your name for your love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. When I called, you answered me. You made me bold and stout-hearted. May all the kings of the earth praise you, O Lord. When my heart, the words of your mouth, may they sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. Though the Lord is on high, he looks down on the lowly, but the proud he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With your right hand, you save me. The Lord will fulfill his promise for me. Your love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. May the words of my mouth in the meditation of my heart, be pleasing and acceptable to you, O Lord my God. I have to tell you a secret about preachers. Well, I'll tell you a secret about this preacher. Um, I speak more than I know. Uh, on more than one occasion, in the years that I preached and my poor wife had to listen every week, she would say when we got home, you don't do that, or you don't believe that, or words to that effect. And I suspect, I'm just guessing, that that's true of every preacher. I speak to you this morning about being thankful. And I think that's probably not something I'm very good at. I grew up in a home it was a loving home, but different. My dad always believed that everybody was out to screw him. That's just who he was. And I picked that up. And I've spent my life trying to not believe that about everybody. And so being thankful is probably something I'm not very good at. You know, the old glass half full, half empty, that sort of thing. I've always thought it was half empty. And, um, well, you know, the, the pessimist sees the glass half empty, the optimist sees the glass half full, and the opportunist drinks it. And uh, I guess we would want to try to maybe be the, the opportunist. So what are you thankful for here this morning on this beautiful day? Family? Friends, the country we live in. I ran across this little prayer uh, I'd like to read to you. Thanks to God for my Redeemer. Thanks for all thou dost provide. 
Thanks for times now but a memory. Thanks for Jesus by my side. Thanks for pleasant, balmy springtime. Thanks for dark and dreary fall. Thanks for tears by now forgotten. Thanks for peace within my soul. Thanks for prayers that thou hast answered. Thanks for what thou dost deny. Thanks for storms that I have weathered. Thanks for all thou dost supply. Thanks for pain. Hmm. Thanks for pleasure. Thanks for comfort in despair. Thanks for grace that none can measure. Thanks for love beyond compare. If you've got your Bibles open there to Psalm 138, I'd like to kind of look at it a little bit, maybe take it apart and see, see what we can find. I guess the first thing that I would notice is that uh, this psalm is given in the first person. He uses I and me and my continually throughout it. I will praise you with all my heart from the soles of my feet to the top of my little bald head. He's not, so, he's not flippant or gets real spiritual about it, but just thanking God for all that he does. About 100 years ago when I was in seminary, I took my Hebrew from Ronald Allen, who's written a book called Praise a Matter of Life and Breath. And he believed that with all his heart. And if you are ever at a used bookstore and you see that book, uh, I'd recommend it to you. There are many things that we can be thankful for. Some are very, very big, big things. And some are, some we don't even think about. Back in the early 1900s, the late 1800s in India, there was a village where uh, blindness uh, was rampant. And uh, a doctor went there from England and tried to figure out why so many people in this small little village were going blind. And he studied and looked and uh, finally determined that there was some kind of a parasite in the water that was leading to the blindness of so many people in this little village. And he figured out how to rid the water of the parasite and uh, the people in the village obviously were very thankful. And as he was leaving, one of them said to him, I will tell your name with my whole heart. It would be an, a, a great thing, wouldn't it, to avoid blindness if you could, and how thankful you would, be, you would be to the person who kept you from going blind. David talks about telling God's name at all times. But he also notes, uh, and you've all been there, you know, when you're up to your armpits in alligators, it's hard to remember that you're there to drain the swamp. And David sometimes is up to his armpits in alligators, but he always tries to remember that what he's there for is to tell God's name. You tell God's name, and God is pleased. There are two books in the last half of the 20th century that I think in Christian books are above and beyond all the other books. The first is Philip Yancey's What's So Amazing About Grace. Uh, that book, uh, I just can't say enough about it. The other is The Shack, and I love that book, and uh, I've read it and reread it many times, and. Uh, and I never read it that it doesn't bring me to tears. I sometimes take a, out, I go out to the mall and I walk a little bit and read a little bit and watch the people a little bit. And, and uh, I took the shack the last time I went and I'm reading it and then pretty soon the tears are flowing and I said to myself, Jim, you can't do this. People are gonna think you're crazy. Sitting there weeping, reading a book. But one of the things that uh, is there is that God in this book often says about the people that are in the book, I'm very, very, it's very special to me. I'm very fond of that one. 
And then David shifts gears. He's been talking about I will, future tense. And in verse 3, he goes to the past tense. He said, when I called, you answered me. He begins to look back. I'd ask you this morning to look back at your life. What great thing has God done in your life? What little thing has God done in your life? I remember in January, 11 years ago, uh, Christy's a twin. I don't know if you knew that. Christy's a twin. And um, her sister was in the hospital with her first baby. And the baby was not growing. And uh, the doctors determined that it was time to bring this baby because the baby wasn't growing and the baby was going to go into distress. And the baby was supposed to be born in April, but she was born in January. And the baby was not growing, and the baby was very small. And it was evening, and they decided to take the baby that night. And uh, they sent in a doctor, an Asian lady who was just as kind as she could be. And she says, I have to tell you this stuff. And then she says, because this baby is going to be so premature and so small, she could be blind. And she started to cry. And I, <laughs> mm. I looked at Jenny, and she, she was crying. And pretty soon I was sitting there, and I was crying. And this doctor went on, and she said, and she could be retarded, and she cried. And she could be deformed, and she could have organs on the inside that were not formed. And it was, it was the most awful thing I think I've experienced <laughs> in a very, very long time. And then every now and then this doctor would say, I'm sorry I have to tell you this, but I have to tell you this. You know, the, the, the hospital and the doctors have to protect themselves. And, and she'd say, I'm sorry I have to tell you this. And she cried and Jenny cried and I cried. And Lydia was born one pound, 14 ounces. And she was healthy that night, and she's been healthy ever since. She's just as smart as she can be. She's in advanced courses. She's small, and she's always going to be small. But my goodness, how good God was to us that night and all the years since. And thanks to God for his grace, and I lift him up. But... Sometimes, those good things don't happen. Sometimes, those prayers aren't answered. Sometimes, all the things the doctor talked about come true. And you all probably have experienced that in your life. You prayed about something. You hoped and prayed that this would turn out this way and, and all would be good. And it all crumbled and fell to ashes. You prayed and it felt like your prayers hit the ceiling and bounced back down. I don't begin to understand how that works. But sometimes God doesn't answer prayer. For example, Lazarus died. And Lazarus's sister says to Jesus, if you'd have been here, none of this would have happened. And Jesus says, this happened for the glory of God. What? <laughs> a death happens for the glory of God? Now, Jesus knew that Lazarus would live again. But they didn't. There's another story in John chapter 9 where the disciples of Jesus are walking down the road and, and there's a a man who's there and he's blind and the scriptures tell us he was born blind. And the disciples get very theological at this time and they, they want to just let Jesus know that they're sharp and on the ball. And they say to Jesus, who sinned? This man or his parents? 
Well, aren't you glad that there is not a direct correlation between sin and sickness? You know, every time you cut off the driver on the road or yell, you idiot, to the driver on the road, and then your finger would break, aren't you glad? But Jesus won't play that game with them. He says, you guys got it all wrong. It's not that this man sinned or his, mo his mother or father sinned. This happened for the glory of God. Eesh. How does that work? I wish I could tell you I knew the answer. But I know that Paul tells us in Romans that all things, not most things or a few things or every now and then things, but all things work together for good to them who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Now that word all is a, <laughs> is a very, very big word. What does it not include? All things work together for good. We don't see the whole picture. We never will until we get to glory. But sometimes some terrible things happen to some awfully good people, and I don't know why, but they do. And we have to trust God that indeed what he tells us is true, that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. There was a wonderful lady, I was, in a, I was pastoring a church in Oregon, southern Oregon, was a lovely, lovely lady there named Vida Steele. Vida was then the age that I am now. And um, she was Canadian by birth. And in 1939 or 1940, I don't know if you, you probably don't remember, but uh, Canada was already at war. Uh, when Hitler invaded Poland in 1939, the British declared uh, war and Canada being part of the Commonwealth also declared war. Well, Vida and her husband were on their way to Africa to be missionaries. And you can look this up. They were aboard the Zam Zam, the name of the ship. A German U-boat sank the Zam Zam and took aboard the crew and the passengers that survived. And, you, and they took Vida and her husband to Germany, put them in a prisoner of war camp. Vida was traded uh, back to Canada for German prisoners. I don't know how that worked, but that's how that worked. And her husband spent the rest of the war in a German prisoner of war camp. And she told that story, and, and uh, she says, you know, God didn't take me then. And I know that one day he soon will, and, and when he's all done with me, I'll be ready to go. When he's used me all up, I'll be ready to go. And that's faith, and that's having trust in God that everything works together for good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. David says at the end of this psalm, the Lord will not do not, he asked the Lord, do not abandon the works of your hands. And I want to close with this. My friend Rick, who's a pastor up in, in New York, says God is with you and in you and for you. And I don't think there's probably a sermon that goes by that he doesn't fit that in somewhere because he wants to remind people, and I want to remind you this morning, that God is with you and in you and for you, and whatever happens in your life is for his glory <laughs> and your good. And we have to take that by faith. Thank you.
Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace.